गुड मॉर्निंग डॉक्टर माइति मस्ट बी हेविंग सम नेटवर्क प्रॉब्लम सो यू स्टार्ट टूडे सेशन इट विल बी ए वर्ल्ड राउंड सीनेरियो डिस्कशन uh dr nitesh pradhan is a third year junior resident at mr mangal hospital will uh, present the scenario dr maithi will join uh, so uh, nitesh you read the scenario and wait for the discussion read the scenario uh, 25 years old gentleman present with acute intestinal obstruction for which he underwent an exploratory exploratory laparotomy intraoperative intraoperative sigmoid volvulus was found sigmoid dissection primary anastomosis and proximal ileostomy was done today is pod2 and the stoma bag contain about 1 liter effluent how will you manage this patient so this is a very common uh, post op scenario where uh, you find a patient under a laparotomy for intestinal obstruction and you did a sigmoid dissection and primary anastomosis and did a ileostomy uh, nitesh uh, if you are the surgeon would you have done the same procedure or you have a difference in uh, opinion same procedure same procedure, same procedure. <clears throat> what is the justification uh, in a, in a patient who has underwent a left colonic resection what is the rationality for doing a proximal diversion uh, <clears throat> sir diversion uh, sir will uh, uh, allow, uh, will allow uh, distal anastomosis uh, uh, to uh, like uh, sir the purpose is to defunction the distal uh, loop for why the, why do you need a defunctioning distal loop by doing a proximal diversion sir uh, in such case sir there is a uh, uh, high risk of anastomotic leak to prevent uh, uh, this 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 diversion you see there are two things one is prevention of the leak and if the leak occurs then the proximal diversion works what is the idea behind does a proximal diversion prevents leak no it does not yes. if if the technical problem or other problem is there it may leak yes. but if you have a proximal diversion then the consequences of this leak will be much less Okay. Yes. What is the current recommendation? If you see now, you are a PG student. What is the current recommendation for doing a proximal diversion on the background of a left colon resection? Is it uh, as you said? I will do the same procedure. Is it mandatory that you have to do a proximal diversion? What is the current recommendation? What is the current recommendation? You see, recommendation is there are a lot of studies now. even in the left sided colonic resection and even in unprepared bowel it has been observed that if you do a primary anastomosis most of the time it heals so you can avoid a proximal stoma but but stoma is indicated when you are in doubt that the uh, anastomotic might fail patient has very poor gc patient has got hypoproteinemia okay patient in sepsis so there are the other there are some situations where you can consider doing a proximal diversion but proximal diversion is not routine for all colonic resection okay so uh, surgeon is the best judge he has done a, a proximal diversion and you being a resident on the second post of day you find uh, this is a uh, contained in the bag how will you proceed to plan your treatment for this patient in next 24 hours what will you do uh, sir <coughs> sir in uh, what sir will uh, sir uh, will take the history uh, then we will do the uh, general physical examination uh, sir will look for the chart and then blood investigation then no, no, you mentioned something what you are given only one information that there is one liter of effluent in the bag yes, in this patient evaluation the second post of day what are the things you should ask and uh keeping consideration for his management what are the things important in history on the second post op day uh, you have done a stoma yes sir and this is a patient who has recovering from intestinal obstruction yes, so what are the things in the uh, 
second post op day you need to ask from the patient sir we'll ask for the uh, like uh, in, like uh, complication of the uh, general complication uh, yes, to rule so out if there is a complication coming up what are the symptoms you are asking the patient sir if uh, patient develops uh, respiratory uh, this uh, like uh, respiratory infection we'll ask for the uh, any respiratory distress shortness of breath uh, sir uh, then sir uh, in uh, there chance of developing uh, dvt so we'll ask for any swelling in the uh, lower limb or pain so i i prefer that you have started rightly you will think that second post op day is the period where patient can develop some complication in the form of general complications in the respiratory cardiac lower limb or it can be a specific complication to the abdominal part of the operation yes. so uh, you talk of general complications you look for the respiratory uh, symptoms and then you think whether the patient has uh, recovering well or he has some pulmonary complications yes. second is there is chance of deep vein thrombosis you will examine the lower limb also next what are the things in the abdomen you should uh, inquire and try to find out uh, sir we we'll look for the uh, look for the abdomen for uh, whether it is asking question uh, what suppose Uh, there are two things one is patient is recovering very well as he should go smooth post op recovery that is one and second is patient has some complaint in the form of an asthmatic leak or bleed or whatever so if he is having a smooth recovery if i the, the elastomy has moved one liter in front in the back that is a good sign that by second day the elastomy has moved and he has passed about one liter of uh, effluent in the back so what are the other things patient may have to say that yes he is not progressing as as he should progress uh, sir uh, sir will ask for uh, in pain in abdomen yes most important is pain yes. so if you have a patient has got an asthmatic leak or some other features of peritonism yes. how will be this abdominal pain sir uh, pain will be sir uh, severe uh, uh, and sir uh, sudden in onset uh, The, some some post op pain will be there yes, some post op some post op but if the patient complains of pain which is becoming generalized yes the pain severity is increasing yes. then that is a significant not really big when it analyzes six so this that will be a significant pain one should be considered about that apart from this other symptom of complications other symptoms he may have vomiting yes sir he may have vomiting okay uh, yes he may have fever and now then on the second post op day you are now in front of the patient you will try to examine the patient what in the examination is important sir uh, sir will do uh, general physical examination will look for the pallor as uh, pallor uh, sir uh, sir, uh, sir will uh, look for the uh, vitals yes very important yes patient having one reflux if the patient has got some other abdominal complications he might be in shock that is important to exclude on the second post op day any evidence of shock so pulse Pulse-pulse blood pressure Pulse-pulse. respiratory rate Pulse-pulse. and then come to the abdominal part of the examination and the second post op day what do you expect this patient to have abdominal examination sir uh, sir in second post op day sir uh, if there is an asthmatic leak and the patient develop a peritonitis there may be a general uh, generalized or localized uh, tenderness yes uh, then sir uh, so then uh, we'll look for the wound site uh, laparotomy wound site uh, laparotomy wound site to rule out any uh, so a thorough a thorough abdominal examination is required sir uh, you should inspect for any distension yes, sir. you should palpate for any uh, tenderness yes, rigidity uh, yes. guarding yes. and then you should inspect the main wound yes. and the most important is the stomocyte yes. what in the stomocyte is important to evaluate it on the second post op sir uh, sir will look for the uh, color of the stoma yes what do you expect what is the normal stoma color if you look at the patient Uh, in a normal uh, color stroma is pink color, yes sir. pink so that is important you you should know the normal appearance of a stroma on the second post op day you have done a ileostomy so that ileostomy should protrude 
and this mucosa should be intact. The, the suture between the skin and the mucosa should be intact. And this ileostomy is normal or developing some complication. That is the idea of examination. So what complications you look for on the second post of day? One is said is color. So if it is showing black, so that means there is ischemic. Yes. Next. The next will look for the uh, bleeding. Bleeding. So there might be some bleeding from the margin. Margin. So it should that next. Uh, then we'll for, look for the uh, sir, uh, uh, stoma retraction. Yes. So it may retract. Yes. Sir. Then. Uh, sir, we'll look for the prolapse. Yes, it can prolapse. Yes. Uh, and you see, immediate, immediate hernia is not important. The second post of day patient is unlikely to have a hernia, but really there might be, if, it, if you made a larger opening, if you made a larger opening, then the gut uh, lumen, uh, you might have some uh, paracolostomy hernia, but that is usually a late complication. So look for this and then look for the effluent. Yes, <clears throat> so this is a part of the examination. And you said you review the chart. What in the chart is important? Sir, uh, in chart, sir, we'll look for uh, sir, uh, blood pressure, uh, sir, heart rate, uh, sir, temperature, uh, sir, then, uh, sir, uh, saturation, urine output, respiratory rate. You are not talking the most important part. Input output Input chart. output talking. That is the most important. Yes. Patient having a stoma with a one liter effluent being drained. Yes. Most important part to manage in this patient is to maintain a proper input-output chart. So what is the special consideration in a patient who has got an ileostomy with regard to uh, fluid balance? Sir, in ileostomy, sir, uh, sir, <clears throat> sir, the effluent will be mostly uh, 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 liquid. And, sir, uh, what does it contain? Sir. And what will be the volume? On second procedure is one liter. So what do you expect on the over the days in the next 24, 72 hours? What do you expect? Uh, sir, it should uh, effluent maybe reduce. Not reduce. It may increase. You see, if you done ileostomy, effluent may be even up to two to three meters. <coughs> what is the effluent? What does it contain? Uh, sir, it contains uh, uh, digestive enzymes, sir. Then, sir, uh, we are not bothered about the rice enzymes. enzymes. We are concerned about the water, water, number one. Number two, how is the sodium here? Sodium. Sir, uh, what else? Is it alkaline or acid? Sir, it is alkaline. Alkaline. So, small gut contains good amount of sodium, close to the serum level, contains some amount of potassium, and it is alkaline juice that is being lost. So, what is the net effect in the body? If the patient is losing two liters, sir, what is the net effect in the body? Sir, uh, sir, <coughs> sir uh, there will be a dehydration. Yes. De uh, dehydration, sir. Uh, then uh, hyponatremia, hypokalemia, patient develops acidosis. Uh, then? Uh, so, this is a metabolic derangement. Yes, metabolic. When you talk of managing this patient, so the management will based on what? One is general management in the second post of day. Second is specific management with regard to the loss of effluent and the stomach care. Yes. Okay. So what fluid with the background of one liter being lost in the effluent bag and this patient 25 years, maybe he's around 60 kg body weight. What should be your fluid advice for this patient in the next 24 hours? Sir, How do you calculate the fluid requirement in the next 24 hours? Uh, sir, we'll uh, calculate sir, uh, the total output, uh, sir, uh, one liter of effluent, then we'll look for the urinary, uh, urine output, uh, <clears throat> then sir, uh, urine output, the riles, uh, riles out, output. If there is riles tube, riles tube output. output, if there is a drain, 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 drain output. output. What else? Sir, insensible loss. Insensible loss. And this one liter of effluent. Yes, sir, one liter of influence. So your uh, calculation will be based on the normal maintenance fluid required plus this one liter effluent. This effluent is containing sodium. Yes, sir. It contains yes, sir. some amount of potassium. So what will be the ideal fluid to replace this effluent? Sir, uh, 
sir uh, sir uh, suppose it is 60 kg sir then uh, no i i am talking of this effluent being to be replaced maintenance you know what you give maintenance you know you give some uh, some amount of dextrose you give about 120 of sodium and mm -hmm. second post of beyond it gives 60 mg of potassium but for this effluent what should be the ideal fluid you are choosing sir ideal fluid sir uh, is sir uh, you are losing alkali alkaline don't choose ringal lactate Alkali. solution don't choose ringal lactate solution this will aggravate the alkalosis yes. so the ideal fluid will be normal, normal saline, saline which contains good amount of sodium Sorry. okay so don't choose ringal lactate for a patient who is already alkalotic what about stomach care how do you take care of the stomach uh, sir uh, and, and before you pass on to that uh, what what is uh, what is the uh, consideration in the pre op phase when you are taking this patient for surgery for a suspected stigmal valvulus yes. and you have in mind that you are going to make a stoma what is a pre operative uh, management of this patient with regard to stoma creation sir uh, sir pre operatively sir uh, first we will do the uh, uh, pre op counseling for the stoma yes sir. first is counseling we should explain the patient he might need a stoma yes and then sir, then sir uh, we will uh, tell about the complication and the indication for the stoma then sir uh, we will uh, uh, mark the site yes uh, you should mark the site yes. tell me the ideal site for creation of a stoma what is uh, stoma triangle stoma triangle is a uh, line, uh, line joining the umbilicus uh, pubic tubercle and the uh, anterior superior lacus good so this is a, a triangle where the ideal stoma should be there okay and while you take that stoma out from the abdominal wall in this triangle what should be the exact ideal site it should be out of rectus sheet or it should be through rectus sheet sir it should be through rectus sheet good it should be through rectus sheet okay it should be through rectus sheet fine then uh, suppose suppose uh, patient is obese sir, obese patient who are having a uh, bulge in the lower abdomen uh, is it the ideal site or that will be some change in the stoma site creation sir there, uh, there should be change in the stoma where, site where do you go sir will go uh, more upward yes uh, sir, so sir, patient who are obese yes. who has got a flabby abdominal wall Uh, there might be a skin crease at this area yes. so in that case the stoma site should be chosen little higher up it is easier for the obese patient to manage most of the obese patient cannot see the area below the umbilicus yes. so it should be little above the umbilicus okay yes. when you create a stoma <coughs> uh this stoma may be either in the colon or in the uh, small gut yes. what is the Uh, advantage of doing a ileostomy rather than a colostomy sir more and more people are preferring to do a ileostomy what is the advantage of doing ileostomy why do you prefer to do ileostomy you say the ileostomy easier to construct yes easier if you take a colon sigmoid colon is having a mesentery yes. other colon doesn't have mesentery So, if you want to do a uh, colostomy, this case you have received a sigmoid colon. So, if you need to do a descending colostomy, you need to mobilize the colon. Small gut is already mobile. Yes. So, technically, a, a, a ileostomy can be constructed easily. Number one. Number two is while going for closure, it is easier to close a ileostomy stoma than a colostomy stoma. What is the problem with ileostomy? Uh, sir, an ileostomy, sir. Uh, uh, Sir, a patient, a effluent will be sir more. Yes. And so, the only thing in ileostomy is initially, initially the effluent is more because you are bypassing the colon. So, patient has initially a loss of a two to three liter. Subsequently, it goes down. But initial effluent output is very high. There might be some problem with the bags with this high amount of effluent, and patient may have some metabolic derangements. So, if you can manage this effluent properly. Then a ileostomy is preferable to a sigmoid colostomy. What are the different types of uh, this is anatomically? If you go by anatomy of this stoma, what are the different types of stoma I can create? Uh, 
here you have done a loop ilustrum yes. that means what you brought out a loop, loop through your uh, peritoneal rent and the sheath rent yes. and you have created the stoma yes. what are the other types of stoma any other type of apart from the loop sir uh, as per anatomical uh, classification yes. sir uh, there may be end uh, uh, stomas, uh, one is end stoma. stoma. End stoma you do most of the time when you are doing a yes, permanent, permanent stoma. stoma. Okay. Yes. Or or you are doing some form of Hartman's procedure. Yes. That means you are closing the distal end and yes. being in the anterior loop as a end stoma. Yes. So this is end stoma. That means you brought out the proximal limb as a stoma. Distal limb is closed or it is a permanent stoma. Then? Uh, double barrel. Uh, <coughs> what is double barrel stoma? Uh, double barrel stoma, sir. Uh, Sir, both the uh, uh, sir, uh, proximal and distal loop, uh, sir, from the proximal and distal loop will create the stoma. Uh, you see, what is the difference between the loop stoma? Sir, uh, the what is the uh, difference uh, between the, the loop stoma? Are separated in the yes, double so in this double barrel stoma, you might have done a dissection. Yes, so now you have two ends of the bowel. Yes. You bring both the ends of the bowel out in the skin, uh, keeping it side by side. So two loops are separate. It's not like a, a loop ileostomy where one uh, there is some amount of effluent can go to the distal part. Here the two loop of the bowel is brought out side by side and kept in the stadium. This is double barrel stoma. Next, doctor, doctor, any other uh, type of stoma? Doctor, Professor Saha. Uh, yes. Very sorry, yes, yes. I am late. Uh, yes, Oh, no problem. No, I was waiting that there might be some net problem. So, we have given a scenario like this. Uh, uh, this is the scenario. And I have asked Nitish a few questions like, uh, how will you going to assess the patient on second post-op day? Number two, uh, what should be the ideal fluid management? And I asked the question whether he could have avoided the stoma. So, there are some, he said he would have done the same procedure. I justified by saying that, in a patient who has got even a left-sided colony resection, the current recommendation is avoid a stoma. Because now the, the, the people have studied and shown that the chance of leak is much less than was predicted. So if, if the patient is otherwise preserved, a stoma could be avoided. But there are some specific indications for creating a stoma. Now I have asked him the different types of stoma. So you can take over. So I have, so last part I have heard. Last part I have heard. Nitesh, uh, now the question is, in this case of sigmoid volvulus, in which situation you must do a ileostomy, not a colostomy. You are compelled to do a colostomy in instead of colostomy. In certain situation of different types of volvulus, you may get a type of volvulus where you are, if you want diversion, you must do a ileostomy, not a colostomy. Can you tell me? When? When are you going to do this? In which type of volvulus you must do a ileostomy rather than a colostomy? Okay, I am answering. Uh, so, if it is a compound volvulus with gangrene of both colon and the ileum, where you have to resect both the colon and ileum, you have made an anastomosis as you have done in this case. So, in that case, the diversion should be at the ileum. It cannot be at the colon. Okay. Yes. Understood. Can do you understand? Yes, sir. Okay. Now tell me, you have mentioned about the double barrel stoma. Okay. Yes. Sir. What are the different components of double barrel stoma? Types. No components. What do you do? Sir, you transect the colon. Okay. Take the colon, uh, sir. Uh, colon. Then we'll. Uh, bring out the two different uh, loops either uh, from the two different openings or no the same opening double barrel will be same opening that is mico fistula if you talk okay. of a do you, different do you, opening believe, the distal do you believe it is uh, both the colon both the barrels are colon or both the barrels are ileum or it can be different or it can be a composite one of them is the ileum and other is the colon yes sir, it can be composite. it may happen in which situation you have to do that in which situation you have to do a double barrel colostomy, double barrel ostomy with the ileum and the colon are the two barrels. Can you answer? Yes, sir. 
सर सर इन केस ऑफ सर सर लाइक इन्फेक्टेड इन्फेक्टेड डायबिटिकोलाइटिस और ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन सर कोलोन ये दैट इन व्हिच सिचुएशन नितेश इन व्हिच सिचुएशन यू हैव टू एक्साइज ए पार्ट ऑफ द आइलियम अलोंग विथ ए पार्ट ऑफ द कोलोन सिकम एंड कोलोन सर इन पैथोलॉजी व्हिच इज इन द व्हिच इन वॉल्यूम रिंग द आईसी रिंग यस एंड व्हिच पैथोलॉजी यू एक्सपेक्ट where in emergency situation you have to do a double barrel stoma <coughs> in usually in malignant cases for example we do the right hemicolectomy and do the primary anastomosis but in certain situation in emergency situation you have to avoid the anastomosis in case of gangrenous intersusception when the gc of the patient is very poor most of the time we know the commonest type of the intersusception is the ileocolic intersusception where both ileum and colon are gangrenous you have to resect a part of the ileum as well as the part of the cecum and colon so if you like to avoid the anastomosis you have to do a ostomy and then a part of the ileum and part of the colon is to be brought out as the double barrel stoma okay so basically that basically the double barrel stoma is where you bring out the proximal and distal limb side by side with the same stomal opening so that is double barrel stoma what is a, a end stoma with mucous fistula what is that this is another form of diversion end color end stoma is you bring the proximal loop as end and distal limb instead of being closed like a hartman's procedure you bring it out to a separate incision in the abdominal wall Yes. that is the mucous fistula in pediatric patient they do other forms of uh, diversion like bishop coup and santuli yes. what is bishop coup sir uh, bishop coup is sir uh, distal uh, ileostomy with uh, end to side uh, <coughs> ileal anastomosis yes so so bishop coup is you anastomose the proximal limb to the distal limb and distal limb is brought out to the exterior as a stoma so this is used for venting and irrigation particularly nekonema yes what is centrally uh, proximal uh, ileostomy uh, yes. and uh, with uh, end to side uh, ileal anastoma yes so distal limb is and as opposed to the proximal limb and proximal limb is brought out as a stoma so this can be used for irrigation and also for venting okay dr maithi and uh, we have discussed about the anatomical aspect of stoma creation Yes, yes. So now you can go for some uh, stoma appliances. How to take care of the stoma? Okay, Doctor uh, Nitesh, uh, can you tell me what is button hole stomy, button hole colostomy, or button hole ileostomy? Button hole ileostomy. It is also called as blow uh, pseudo stoma. No, what Doctor Maithi has asked, I will have modified is also is a pseudo stoma. So instead of bringing out the intestine particular the small intestine in the form of a loop or end ileostomy you can bring only the part of the circumference of the yes. ileum so that and this open is required the open is required feature and where you cannot brought it out there is mesenteric edema mesenteric short you cannot bring it out so it's a technical difficult way very obese individual in that case what dr mike is saying that you bring out the anti mesenteric border and just Uh, open it up and suture to the skin. Yes. So this is a button hole stoma or a uh, also known as pseudo loop stoma. It is not a exactly a loop, but it is like a, a loop and a stoma. Okay. So uh, now this patient is having a stoma that is the ileostomy. Okay. So and postoperatively, how you are going to manage the stoma? What care? How? What care you will take for that stoma? already professor sah has told you that is the pre operative counseling very important yes, you must yes. heal the patient and post operatively it is the patient's job as well as the caretaker's job to take the care of the stoma so as a doctor a treating doctor how you will take care of that stoma sir uh, first see, if you don't if you don't take care of the stoma properly patient have excoriation lot of problems so very good Uh, stoma care by stoma therapy nurse 
and educating the patient and his relative is very important. So, what are the ways you take care of the stomach? Sir, uh, what appliances are available in the market? Tell us a little about the appliances that are available in the market. Before that, Dr. Pradhan, tell me whether you will put an appliance on the day of operation or you would like to put the appliance few days afterwards? Uh, day afterwards. Day of operation. Why not? Okay. If it is not available, you can stay back and ask for the appliance to come and then we'll apply it. Okay. So for proper fitting of the appliance, what are the care you will take for the construction of the ostomy? So that sir, the uh, appliance fit properly and there is less leak. Sir, uh, sir we'll clean the uh, stoma and the uh, periostomal uh, skin uh, and then sir will dry it up uh, sir uh, will uh, cut the uh, uh, okay now tell me in short tell me will you prefer a flash type of stoma or a pouting type of stoma little pouting or a flash type of stoma stoma may be flash stoma may be protruding uh, yes, what do you prefer Sir, uh, a pout type of stoma. Yes. Always, always in every stoma, almost always a pouting type is preferable because all the appliance will fit well and leak will be less. Okay. Yes, but but if you now go to the different type of stoma uh, bag available in the market, if people are saying that even even a flush stoma also can be managed with a good appliance. So okay. preferable is a pouting stoma. But if you have a flush stoma also, you can manage with uh, newer appliances bag. So, what are the different system of bag available in the market? What are the what different is... types of bags and appliances you can apply over the stoma? Yeah. Sir, uh, one piece uh, yes. stoma bag. One piece stoma bag and two piece. In, in two piece, what is the name of the piece? What is the name of the two piece? What is attached to the fitted on the skin and okay. other is... One is sir, what is that? Uh, that is described as a base plate. Base plate, sir. That is a base plate. And in the base plate, you have a ridge. Yes. Sir. Where you apply the bag. Yes, sir. In, in a single system, in a single uh, pouch system, you have the adhesive directly on the bag itself. Yes. You open it up and place it. So once it is over, you have to replace the whole thing. In, in two systems, you the base plate may remain attached to the body. Yes and you have to clean the bag, take it off. Okay, these are the two important appliance systems are available. And patients who are using for the longer time, there is a system called belt. You may apply a stoma belt. So, after attaching, there are side uh, bulge on the bag where you can attach the belt. So, this prevents displacement. So you must be knowing the different types of appliance available. So you are applying a appliance. How, what are the steps for applying a new bag? Uh, sir, we, uh, for new bag, sir, uh, sir uh, we'll clean the uh, stoma side, yes. uh, stoma and the uh, skin surrounding. But then we'll dry it up. Sir, uh, after uh, drying, sir, uh, uh, we'll cut the stoma bag uh, as per the size of the how 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 are you going to cut what is the first step you do the company provides you something sir marking what does the company provides with the bag have you seen in the in the pack you will find the company provides you some uh, papers of different whole sizes if you have a uh, erotonist to me the opening is very small so if you have a colostomy, the opening is a little bigger. So company provides a pre-cut rounded papers. So you try to fit which cut fits into your stomach. So get that marking. And then you cannot start cutting without a exact measurement. So measurement is done by the pre-cut papers provided by the company. Try to fit it in the stomach. And then based on this you cut and while cutting what precaution you should take in the in the bag is a single system there are some markings 
Yes. Have you noticed any marking? Which wants you not to be, go beyond that? You will find a dot dot marking. Yes. You should not cut beyond that mark. In that case, the bag will not fit. Yes. So in the bag, you have a marking of uh, 10, 15, 30, 35, 45. And beyond it, there is a dotted line. That means you should not cut beyond the dotted line. You have to choose a different bag then. So measure the stomach size. Cut the adhesive part properly as per the diameter of the opening of the stomach. Okay, done. Then? Uh, it's, 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 like adhesive paste or something is up, available that we can put uh, around the skin of the uh, to, uh, surrounding to the stomach. Uh, so then uh, we'll remove the uh, uh, plastic cover from the adhesive part of the stoma and then put, uh, we'll put the stoma uh, bag. And then we'll fix the uh, we'll fix with the adhesive. Uh, surrounding the sticky part of the uh, stoma bag the bag has got a, a drainage area where you apply a clip yes, the drainage area should be directed towards the groin or to be directed towards the side of the patient uh, no towards the side of the yes it should be towards the side it is easier to empty from the side so you see the stoma bag should be placed transversely because even the groin, na, patient flex the leg, it will be uh, coming on the way. And then what about the uh, two-piece system? The two-piece system, sir, uh, uh, sir, base plate, uh, sir, uh, that is uh, fixed, sir, we can uh, change the uh, stoma bag. Uh, we can, uh, the, the, uh, how many bags you should advise the patient to have? Uh, two, bags. two bags. Because once you have one bag in place, you need to clean it up yes. and dry it up. So ideally, patient should have two bags. You replace the bag and then clean it, dry it up and then reuse it. So you can use alternative. What is the average longevity of this base plate? What an average? I'm not talking of patient who is giving too much effluent, there is a leakage. If you use properly, what is the longevity of these bags? At what interval you should replace it? It's, it's about seven days. Some patient can take it up to ten days, but average is a base bed can be used for about seven days. You have to keep in mind these are all costly appliances. Each of these bags costs you about uh, 250 rupees. And if you use a, a double system, that cost you about six to eight hundred rupees. Uh, yes, Dr. Maiti, anything uh, now we can discuss about uh, how, how to decide about the uh, stomach closure. Okay, uh, Dr. Pradhan, uh, can you tell me other than the bag, any appliance can be added to the skin barrier or OFR? Cap. Sometimes you can place a cap. And the cap is usually preferred by those patients who are advised to have colostomy irrigation. Can you give some idea about colostomy irrigation? What is colostomy irrigation? Uh, colostomy irrigation, sir, uh, uh, will put the uh, sir, uh, police cathet uh, catheter sir, and flush with... No, the no, company does not provide police catheter. If you talk of the irrigation, the first thing to know is why do you need irrigation? You see, stoma has no valve. If you have a stoma, patient is to have the stool coming for the whole day. Now, patient who are in the stoma for a longer time, this is a new appliance where you can irrigate the stoma in the morning, sitting in the commode, and then you can be dry for longer period. So, company has got a system for this irrigation. You did not put a police catheter. The company kit contains a catheter. Okay, the Dr. Company Pradhan, Dr. Pradhan, this uh, colostomy irrigation is nowadays, it is very much uh, becoming popular because you have not to use a bag which is cumbersome. Sometimes it hangs, sometimes it projects outside the clothing. 
सो इफ यू कैन वर्क और हैव ए नॉर्मल लाइफ विदाउट ए बैग दैट इज प्रेफर ओनली द इफ द आई क्यू ऑफ द पेशेंट इंटेलिजेंसी ऑफ द पेशेंट इज गुड एंड इफ द पेशेंट कैन डू इट देन ओनली इट इज प्रेफरेबल यू हैबिचुएट द पेशेंट टू हैव द क्लीनिंग ऑफ द कोलोन वंस इन अ डे पर्टिकुलर इन द मॉर्निंग देन यू कैन गो आउट बट एट द सेम टाइम द पेशेंट शूड हैव रेगुलर गुड बाउल हैबिट सो दैट ही डज नॉट और सी डज नॉट सफर फ्रॉम डायरिया रेगुलर स्टूल पैसेज एट पर्टिकुलर टाइम एंड दिस कैन स्टे फॉर अबाउट ट्वेंटी फोर आवर्स विदाउट एनी पैसेज ऑफ स्कूल ओके एंड दिस इज एप्लीकेबल ओनली फॉर कोलोन सिगमोइड कोलोन एंड ट्रांसफर्स कोलोन यू कैनॉट डू इट फॉर आइलियम आइलियोस्टोमी बिकॉज इन स्पाइट ऑफ योर इरिगेशन दैट आइलियोस्टोमी विल कंटिन्यू वर्किंग थ्रू आउट द डे सो इट इज ओनली एप्लीकेबल वेन द कोलोन कंटेंट द हार्ट स्टोन ओके even even for a st- colostomy also most of the people prefer to keep a bag but most of the time bag will be empty because sometimes if the patient at all uh, leaks uh, it will be em- uh, embarrassing for the patient so okay. most of the time patient will be dry but it is preferable to keep a bag so that any time some uh, amount leak a patient can be taken either care of cap, either you use a bag or a cap Yeah, the cap is also available you can apply a cap and you can go to the toilet sicker patient can go to the toilet and make the cap open and clean it that is possible now tell me what are the common complications of stoma of a stoma the early complications early complications early complications are bleeding uh, uh, stoma prolapse uh, necrosis then sir uh, bleeding necrosis then stoma uh, so common uh, earliest complication within a day or two are the uh, your necrosis bleeding bleeding and necrosis and uh, next next stoma uh, retraction and and if there is a large opening what is going to happen sir uh, large opening prolapse prolapse so these are the four important complications which can come up in immediate post op period okay bleeding necrosis retraction yes. and prolapse and late complications late complications sir uh, parastomal hernia uh, sir then and uh, stenosis stenosis yes and parastomal hernia yes. prolapse and is also a late complication eh? prolapse late complication. okay now prothan tell me suppose there is a loop colostomy eh? prolapse can occur through both proximal and distal loop which loop is more prone to have a prolapse either proximal or distal please repeat please repeat repeat the question suppose there is a loop colostomy and there is a prolapse a loop colostomy has a proximal loop and distal loop through which loop the prolapse is more common so the proximal loop or distal loop sir uh, through the sir uh, proximal loop no that is the uh, wrong answer that is a common understanding common answer come like that that it is the proximal because it is for the so the because along with the peristals is comes out but the okay. observation is always that always it is the distal colon which shows the prolapse more commonly than the prolapse through the proximal loop okay so the you remember it that is a, a common mistake usually made by the student okay suppose uh, there is a prolapse big prolapse causing embarrassment to the patient yes, so how do you manage that sir uh, sir uh, in prolapse sir if uh, the edema has not developed uh, uh, then uh, sir we can do a conservative management we'll uh, take uh, uh, we'll uh, use the hypertonic line and we can try to push inside uh, push the no, don't confuse <laughs> Hey, no edema. Then hypertonic cell does not come. If it is a prolapse without edema, then mild prolapse can be manually reposed. Yes, sir, manually. Okay. If it is a stoma which is prolapsing too much, and patient is near the point of closure, what what you can do? If it is a stoma and uh, period of stoma closure, yes. What you should do? then we can sir uh, go for closure. yes so consider early closure if it is feasible yes. if the patient is a permanent stoma and patient got a prolapse 
then sir then uh, sir we we'll do the conservative uh, management uh, we'll try to repost the uh, collapse part conservative easily fails you see if there is a permanent stomach collapsing it will keep on increasing in uh, collapse yes, sir if it occurs uh, if it recur uh, then we'll go for uh, revision uh, Surgery. Two things. Either is you refashion at the same site, yes, or or you or you reposition it somewhere else. Yes, okay. Actually, uh, before closure, you have to think of why you have made the colostomy. If it is a temporary colostomy, for example, there are some pathology which is present distally and which is correctable, which is just waiting for the final or definitive operation. you try to make a early date for the definitive operation which is due for example uh, there was a fistula multiple bad fistula or something else so you manage the distal pathology earliest possible and then you will have the option to close the stoma earliest okay so if it is uh, a uh, we, are, we are nearing time uh, about the closer you have done this stoma yes. for stigmoid valvulus primary extension osteomosis when you look consider the closure of the stomach and what are the things you look for before you consider this uh, closure uh, usual uh, time for closure is 6 to 8 weeks uh, will uh, will we'll have to assess the uh, will have the uh, will have to assess the uh, nutritional and status of the patient uh, then sir will look for the uh, distal con uh, continuity so you have done this stoma for a sigmoid dissection anastomosis you have to ensure that the anastomosis are healed well yes. how do you ensure that how do you ensure that distal segment is healed there is no leak yes. how do you how do you do that we will do the uh, uh, contrast yes what is contrast study you do a distal you do a distal cologram Colo, yes. distal cologram or or you can do a colonoscopy it's only a colonoscopy yes. see the stoma site the stoma site is healed and apart from this you should consider the patient general fitness yes. is anemia is protein uh, yes. level yes. so otherwise patient should be fit for this stoma closure dr maiti you have any presentation uh, no It, I don't know. Only that some complications, just photographs I can show. Nothing else. Yes, 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 sir. We have discussed the basic part. These are the things you should have uh, in exam for a uh, stoma management. No, no, maybe you can have a few few slides being shown. Uh, sharing of the skin should be stopped from other. Yes, yes. You stop sharing skin. Dr. Maithi will uh, share his skin. Few slides, uh, quickly. Few slides also. Oh, yeah. Uh, Milind is uh, stopping share. Milind, you stop sharing. Yes, sir. I'm trying, huh? Just it is taking time to open. So, uh, thank you, Professor Shah, for organizing this class. And in the audience, I find uh, many of my good friends, including very seniors, are present along with the students. So just I am showing some uh, photographs, and uh, just uh, you see the local complications which can occur. Already been discussed. Late complication we have discussed. In a late complication comes the prolapse, stenosis, retraction. Your skin is thin, Dr. Maithi. Uh, yes. Can Your I... skin is not thin. Skin is not not it's thin. Not thin yet. We cannot see your oh, screen. Okay, okay. Then I'm trying again. Uh, Share your screen. Uh, sharing screen. Uh, yes. Uh, share. Is it now visible? Yes, sir. Can yes, yes. yes, yes. Visible, visible. Okay, fine. 
And so uh, these complications are more common in children and more complications are with loop colostomies. More complications are with transverse colostomy than with pelvic colostomy. And following emergency operations, the complications are much more than an elective operation. And serious complications can occur in immunological compromised patient and with patient with sepsis, malignancy, as well as obesity. And uh, perforation after colonic irrigation sometimes can occur. And another thing we must not forget, that is the, about, about the complication of a colostomy, is the severe psychological complication and psychosexual dysfunction. Because of the presence of colostomy, the patient suffer seriously from psychological problem, particularly its sexual activity with his partner or her partner. That should also be remembered. And you should do a proper counseling and the patient may not express before you the problem. You may inquire separately whether he is facing any problem regarding the sexuality. And you, can, you may solve his or her problem somehow. So this is the initial edema which can occur, but that will disappear within few days. So you should not much be much worried about this edema. Usually this edema may cause temporary obstruction of the stomach, but it will disappear. In the initial part, you may have to introduce a lubricated catheter, simple rubber catheter to reduce the edema so that the fetus may come out. And you see, this is a complication. And the, you must also remember about this complication. If your sutures are not proper between the parietal wall and the colonic wall, then when if the patient have a severe postoperative cough or strain, the suture may break and the intestine may come out through the gap between the skin and the colon. And this is what is the complication? Can you tell Pradhan? This complication is not prolapse. This is the, it is not hernia because it is no sac. So you will enumerate this complication as evisceration. It is a complication, acute complication or emergency complication, which is known as evisceration. So in the colostomy may recede to a severe extent leading to the intestinal obstruction. You see a worm is coming out. This worm may come out through the colostomy itself. But in this particular patient, the patient had anastomosis and probably the, through the anastomotic leak, this worm came out and that was coming out through the gap between the skin and the colon. So the transverse colostomy, pelvic colostomy has less complication than the transverse colostomy. And this is the severe excoriation of the skin along with the severe wound raisins. And skin excoriation may happen in different way. Bleeding may occur from the margin of the colostomy, from the intestine as well as from the parietal wall. And you see, instead of coriation, the coriation has exceeded too much, leading to maceration of the surrounding tissue around the colostomy. This produces a problem. If there is no severe recession of the gut, you can wait, you can do the conservative treatment continued and if the colostomy functions or the barrel, double barrel colostomy function and this wound may heal but if it does not heal, there is an excessive recession you have to explore and cite the colostomy in a healthy or virgin area. So this is a colostomy which was an unnecessarily made colostomy and that colostomy should can be avoided in certain cases because this patient, this baby has a low anorectal malformation. You, can, you could correct this low anorectal malformation in the infancy at but the diagnosis is uncertain. It was mistakenly made a diagnosis of high anomaly. So colostomy was done. So unnecessarily the patient will have three objective operation when noise is coming from uh, from Tamon Nundi some noise is coming. Dr. Nundi, Diptam, Diptamon, Dr. Diptamon, noise is coming probably for you. Okay, so in this patient, the colostomy could be avoided. So, so when you are planning a colostomy or a colostomy, always keep in your mind whether it is necessary 
or you are doing an unnecessary ostomy or not. That should be taken care of. So uh, in our country for pediatric patient, we do not prefer always the bag appliances. It is always easy to manage the soft roll, soft cotton roll over the colostomy site. So you see how the patient and his mother has innovated this uh, appliance rather than cover. Cotton uh, made uh, uh, your clothing that covers it and he is using it in a very nice way. And so this is the recession or it, so this is the retraction or recession, retraction with retraction. You see in this patient, two complications may coincide. So in a colostomy, remember more than one complication may be there. There may be recession along with stenosis. There may be yes. prolapse along with paracolostomy hernia. So many of the complications may be associated with same stoma. So the management becomes difficult when there are more than one complication is there along with the ostomy. And you see the prolapse may be severe like this. This is the prolapse through the proximal loop and this is the prolapse through the distal loop. And you see in this patient, this is the prolapse through the distal loop. The proximal loop is the stoma is remaining okay. And you see in this patient, this patient had a double barrel colostomy. There is the proximal colostomy that is functioning well. And in spite of a distal mucus fistula in the double barrel colostomy, there is a prolapse of the distal loop. So this is the paracolostomy hernia. So paracolostomy hernia may present in a different way. That may present with a swelling or bulging lateral to the colostomy site or sometimes the colostomy itself may bulge as in case of severe rectal prolapse what, what happens so ilia may prolapse through the returning and the entering layer of the rectal uh, prolapse loop so here in this patient is part of the ilia has entered between the two loops of the layers of the colon so paracolostomy hernia may also occur through the lateral aspect and if there is a paracolostomy hernia the management is very difficult and sometimes only a mesh can only save and protect it from paracolostomy hernia. You see this is a case of Hertzsprung disease with intestinal obstruction and the colostomy was done in spite of that that is not working the cause may be that the selection of proper site may not be good may not was may be wrong probably this colon was also bearing the ag endemic segment so that is not working well so uh, the patient was needing the recurrent the calibration with a catheter and ultimately the patient needed another colostomy at the proper site so this is a uh, stenosis of the colostomy and remember another complication of colostomy is the in case of malignant cases is the metastasis in the colostomy Suppose you have done a end colostomy for the following APR. So at the colostomy site, there may be metastasis causing to the leading to the obstruction of the colostomy. So in a case of yeah, or, APR, or a stoma size recurrence, or a stoma size recurrence, a stoma recurrence, or a stoma stoma recurrence. So that is another complication of the uh, colostomy. And so the complications of colostomy there are prolapse. Remember also that prolapse and pericolostomy hernia rarely coexist, but may, they may coexist. Prolapse and retraction can coexist. Colostomy stenosis occurs almost exclusively in the in colostomy. In loop colostomy, probably our experience, Dr. Monju Banerjee is there, Somindro is there, and many others, Gautam Dev Devasis and Professor Saha. Probably we have never seen any stenosis in the loop colostomy. Where all the stenosis which we have found in only exclusively in the end colostomy and remember the complication of colostomy and complication of closure of colostomy are always associated with the existing comorbidities in the patient including malignancy, jaundice, uh, your, your um, uh, obesity, smoking and so many things. So systemic illness may magnify the local complication of colostomies. Many of the, so in conclusion, I like to say that many of the complications of colostomy are preventable. Proper colostomy, bowel care, ideal stoma appliances play the most important role. Some of the complications may be life threatening and will lead to 
redo colostomy. Sometimes redo colostomy, decision to do a redo colostomy should be taken at the right moment. If you delay in making a redo colostomy, that may endanger the life of the patient. In many of the other chronic complications, early reconstructive surgery of the distal bowel will facilitate the discontinuation of the colostomy. As we are discussing that if there is a distal pathology for which the temporary colostomy was performed, that pathology should be corrected at the ideal time, at earliest time, ideal time and properly so that you can discontinue colostomy. Colostomy is not a good operation in the sense that it could produces too much embarrassment to the patient but also it is a life-saving operation it is also an operation which facilitates the other surgeries malignant surgery at the inflammatory surgery so many things but colostomy care is one of, one of the most important part that is the job of the clinician job of the as professor sa has mentioned job of the uh, sister nursing care and you, we know in the hospital sometimes many uh, male nurses and many care stomach care persons are coming they are uh, coming regularly and they take care of the patient but one of the most important thing is the patient's teaching patient training patients should be properly trained how they can manage the colostomy and that is the best way for the care of the colostomy. Thank you, Professor Saha and all the students and participants in this seminar. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Maiti. There are two questions in the chat box from Madam and Dr. Basak regarding why not to do a pelvic colostomy or a transverse colostomy. As I said, uh, you can do a colostomy, but technically a diversion by a ilostomy is easier for construction and also for closure. So that is the reason people, more and more people are preferring to do have a ileostomy rather than a colostomy. So uh, thank you all. So we, we just uh, conclude this session. Uh, thank ma you. Ma Mahunda, yes, Mahunda, yes. can I uh, add a small suggestion? With the advent of laparoscope, we are Dr. doing, uh, uh, we are, with the advent of laparoscope, we are doing uh, more or more uh, more more laparoscopic assisted col colorectal surgery. Yes. So nowadays, what I am doing, I am uh, putting the laparoscope and in uh, where I have to do a uh, ileostomy, I am uh, putting the laparoscope in and mobilizing the hepatic flexor. Mobilization of the hepatic flexor is very simple, and I am. Uh, picking up the hepatic flexor and doing a colostomy. That is easier to manage in comparison to uh, uh, ileostomy because as you have already discussed, ileostomy management is tedious, a lot of fluid comes out and this right colon absorbs a lot of water. So I, nowadays in left colon surgery, I am putting the uh, colon, uh, laparoscope and mobilizing the hepatic flexor and doing a colostomy at the hepatic flexor point. This is giving me a little bit mileage. This is my, my suggestion yes. just. This is still Dr. Bisha, Bashak, for exam purpose, still the recommendation... No, 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 for exam purpose, this is not acceptable. People will not like you. Okay. But this is for practical purpose. You need a, you need a larger opening to make to bring the uh, colonic stoma out. It is difficult to manage the upper abdominal stoma for a usual person. Uh, the bag will be exposed on the surface. So... Uh, it is technically possible. You can do a uh, uh, colostomy, but uh, more and more people are recommending to do a... You see, initially the effluent is more. And if you give the patient adequate fluid and electrolytes, it can be managed well. Afterwards, uh, but, it goes down. But so, ileostomy patient will need one and a half liters of uh, extra fluid. One liter of extra fluid, always. Yeah. Afterwards, it goes down. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you all. Uh, we just conclude today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you.